Eventually, it, it became impossible to continue to grow where the church was downtown. Um, more and more people were driving in from suburbs. The suburbs were being developed further and further away from downtown. When we were downtown, we would have to take both our boys to two different buildings, then we would go to a third building for Sunday school, and then we would go back and pick them up and go to the worship center. Rain, sleet, or snow crossing Peachtree Street. So it wasn't convenient to be a member at First Baptist Church Atlanta downtown. I had worked there all my life, you know, and I, I was attached to the building, but it had become unsafe in that particular block downtown. And I had seen things go on on the parking lot at my office window that I was not comfortable with. We even looked at what if we built a sanctuary right here in this parking lot? But then, okay, uh, where do the people park? What about Sunday school? All of this, we, we had people in Sunday school classes in these other buildings. One day I had a staff meeting and um, we had this big map on a wall. And I said, you know, one of these days we gotta think about moving because I'm watching what's happening here. I said, now, if I could go anywhere I wanted to go, here's where I'd go and I walked over and put my finger on that big map, I said, that's where I'd go, on 285. Well, two months later, where I put my finger is where we are now. There was, I, God knew exactly where we needed to be, and so we bought this property. Avon calling. I remember very well the first time Doc Stanley and I came out to look at the building. We walked in and this was this huge, huge place with conveyor belts and machinery, very dirty and greasy and grimy. And it just, it just looked like it was impossible to ever translate that into any decent building. It was the old Avon property. So I thought, well, you know what? They've been making soap and cleaning people physically. We're gonna take that same building and clean them up spiritually. He asked me one day would I be willing to go out with a team and start services in the Avon property, um, on the Avon property. And um, I was really excited about that. I worked at First Baptist for 10 years after being in seminary, and I was the student pastor working with high school kids and filling in for my dad and loving life. It was great. He said, just go do what you need to do to begin to make inroads into that neighborhood and to shift some people out of downtown into those empty seats so we can continue to grow while we sell the downtown property. And so um, he allowed me to put together a team of existing staff. We went out in a very, very raw environment, concrete floors, scaffolding with speakers on them and uh, moved into a part of the facility that seated about 800 people just on the flat floor and allowed us to start you know, what became known as the First Baptist North. So there was a lot of transition that took place with folks who had a hard time making that transition, and yet there was not a whole lot of fuss about it because we had such confidence in Dr. Stanley as our pastor to lead us. So again, now we grew and we refilled up all the empty seats downtown, he did, then we filled up all the empty seats in the North location, and again, God just continued to bless, people continued to come, and um, you know, it, it was really quite amazing. And so we'd been in here for uh, a number of years and I kept looking around and looking at the front and thinking I had looked on television and I thought, something's gotta change. So I began to say to the congregation, you know, we gotta get in the 21st century. We have to remodel all this, trust me. We can make this place absolutely awesome. We're going to have the right light and the right sound and the right environment. It's going to be intimate. We're going to be looking at each other instead of just looking behind everybody's head. So I said, we're going to trust God for the money and we're going to get started. So we drew up some plans and I told the contractor, who is a member of our fellowship, I said, now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you 80 days. He said, now wait a minute, 80 days to totally revamp this whole place, which included changing the whole front, taking out this huge pillar that held up this whole ceiling, uh, turning everything around here inside out. 80 days, it can't be done 80 days, so you got 80 days. You got 80 days and we're gonna trust God to give us the right kind of workman who will take it personally and take it to heart because this is God's house. In 80 days, they did it. Whenever Dr. Stanley uses situations in our church to grow our faith as far as a church 
walking with vision and growing and moving, it always affects us. And that means that if God was faithful yesterday, yes, He was, He's faithful today, which gives me great confidence that He's gonna be faithful tomorrow.